All right, Corey, show me this uh, magic trick that you, that you said you had here. Prepare to be dazzled. <laughs> Hat. Empty. Magic wand. Hocus pocus. Tap tap. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. What's in here? What's in here now? <laughs> oh, there's a rabbit. I got a rabbit in my head. <laughs> that, was, that was a terrible trick, man. Come on. At least nothing went wrong, though, right? I guess. Whoa. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. My God. <laughs> Is it noon? It's noon. <laughs> My name is Joseph from the channel Curious Joe, and thanks for staying. Oh, I almost did. I actually almost did it. Oh my god, that's that's harder than it looks. How do you do it? I don't know. I don't know if I believe that. <laughs> One more time. Here it goes. <laughs> okay. Anyway, thank you for that submission, that Curious was a, Joe. That was a really good intro. Really cool intro. Are you sure it's not Curious George? Uh, no, uh, it's Curious Joe. Curious Joe. <laughs> Thanks for staying up till noon, everybody. My name is Ryan. My name is Corey. That, yeah. was, a, that was really impressive. That was really cool. Yeah, thanks Good for sending that in, Curious Joe. Very magic like, which fits uh, into the theme of this episode. Perfect. And that episode is. Four magic tricks gone, gone wrong. wrong! Yes. Four magic tricks gone wrong unfortunately <laughs> we're gonna, gonna touch up on them, right? we're gonna touch up on four of them because that's what we said because that's what we said because that's what we said four <laughs> magic tricks are <laughs> i mean come on we all know magic is amazing but it's sometimes. it's not uh, it's not all smoke and smokes and mirrors and smokes and mirrors sometimes Things, they actually do stuff <laughs> there is actually some real real danger in some of them yeah. and this first one that i'm going to talk about um her name is princess tenko Ooh. and this trick was princess tenko and the swords this japanese performer known well for her outlandish costumes was on stage in the city of sabai in 07 when her show took a turn for the worst Tenko was stuffed into a box where she was to become a pincushion for ten incoming swords if she didn't escape in time. Well, she did not escape in time. <laughs> Uh-oh. And, I mean, amazingly enough, she's, she didn't die, but the swords did end up breaking several ribs and her cheekbone. And amazingly, <coughs> second amazing part is that she actually finished the performance before she went to get medical attention. That's, a, that's pretty cool, Yikes. like, to be able to finish your show you know yeah, that's where so, you get your money's worth <laughs> so it's not like they just disappear instantly because you know that's you know that's uh, uh, not like that <laughs> but no that's that's pretty intense she almost disappeared <laughs> disappeared one? cut in half <laughs> the next one here is labeled george lalonde lalonde george lalonde <laughs> and the backstabbing audience member what's going on here most sensible people regard illusions for what they are, bits of misdirection. But Henry Howard, who sat in the audience of the show in Montreal in 1936, became agitated when Jeez. the stage magician George Lalonde prepared to saw his assistant in half. I mean, okay, let's just touch on this for a second here. For one, let's say you don't know, let's say you're an adult, okay, and you've never seen this trick before. Yeah. That's frightening to this see is, this is also in the 30s yeah so exactly it's, so it's like there's it, no there's no such thing as special effects yeah exactly like it's just like what is this person doing why is he gonna yeah. saw this girl in half so howard of course unfortunately rushed to the stage grabbed the sword and plunged it into lalonda's neck in which he uh perceived as an act of heroism like well, hey, i'm a hero like i saved this woman the lawn survived while Howard told the police he couldn't bear to see a woman cut in two. <laughs> oh man, that's 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 crazy. So yeah, that's unfortunate. This next one here is 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 pretty gruesome too. Yeah. Charles Rowan and the speeding car. <laughs> Broom. <laughs> in magic, tension is everything, right? While a performer may be holding his or her breath underwater, the audience is holding theirs, waiting for them to come back up, and so you know they just go for that real dr dramatic effect. Yeah. And South African Charles Rowan understood the appeal of this, which is why he repeatedly consented to being secured in a straitjacket and had a car speed towards him at 45 miles per hour. Like, that's not, it's not just putting towards him. Like, yeah. it's, he's going fast. 45 miles an hour. <laughs> Rowan performed this stunt many times, but it, of course, only needs to go wrong once of course and it, it did <laughs> unfortunately while appearing in front of a sizable crowd in 1930 again in, in the 30s <laughs> rowan uh, failed to dislodge himself in time and the car ran clear over him 
at virtually severing his leg and, and, and ending his life. Prior to the stunt, Rowan wrote a letter of exoneration for the driver, just in case something went wrong. Very smart to do. At least he did that, because, you know, I'm sure that driver felt extremely guilty after... And we have footage of it right here. Ah, uh, no, no, no. no, we can't show people getting killed, <laughs> unfortunately, right? <laughs> Let's get some views. <laughs> but you know what, that's... It's funny, because a lot of these happen, obviously. It's funny, the, hey? Someone dies, it's funny. Yeah, it's funny. But, you know, this. a lot of these happened in the 30s, of course, because that's when, like, Houdini was, yeah. was really, you know, notorious yeah. in the magic scene. The last one here. This one's pretty... This one's pretty gruesome, so... <laughs> if you guys don't like to hear about people dying, you probably shouldn't watch this episode. You probably shouldn't have started watching this episode to begin with. <laughs> so, the next one here is Joseph W. Burris. Um, the lifelong dream of 32-year-old Joseph... Uh, was, was to be more famous than his hero, obviously, Harry Houdini. On who, Halloween night in 1992... Who's that? <laughs> Harry who? Harry huh? Harry who done what? <laughs> Harry where? <laughs> Harry who? What am I where? Okay, go. <laughs> On Halloween night 1992, so just you know, about 24 years ago, the anniversary of Houdini's death, he attempted to try to escape the, the, the escape that Houdini obviously failed at, being buried alive. Ooh. Amazing, uh, Joe had himself handcuffed, locked in a homemade coffin, and then placed in a grave two meters to seven feet deep, and buried alive under seven tons of dirt and cement, about the weight of a male African elephant. Amazingly, no one was able to convince him that it was obviously clearly impossible, and that he needed some sort of illusion to come out of the trick alive. During his preparation, a reporter covering the story pointed out to him that the cement dries quicker on the bottom than it does on the top. So even if he didn't get crushed to death, he'd still have to get through several feet of dirt before trying to break through a layer of cement <laughs> that was hardening, oh, all while geez. all while running out of air. So, however, you know, unfortunately, the cement was not uh, even an issue. Uh, the dirt and the cement collapsed completely on him and he was crushed before leaving the coffin so the, like, co the coffin didn't hold up like home maybe it wasn't a homemade coffin yeah amazing joe yeah how geez. about amazing coffins <laughs> <laughs> coffins.com amazing coffins.com buy your coffins from amazing coffin.com <laughs> no that's that's pretty, that's like a horrifying death yeah, okay like you're I'm, you're you're a performer and you're being put into a coffin and you don't even have the chance to even perform the illusion. You like, just, it literally, it crushed. crushes you. Um, and we, you know what? We obviously can't show it. We, this was televised. Because it's, it's, in, it's 92. It's 92. So. And very popular, mu like, magician at the time. So they are like, we're gonna, we're gonna obviously show this. And the, it's used as a what to not do in magic. And yeah, so we'll put the link in the description. Obviously, we can't show you guys. It's, yeah, watch it's, it, Watch at your own discretion. Yeah, exactly. If you want to see somebody die, then watch it. <laughs> if you don't want to see somebody die, then please don't watch it. But I mean, that was that's a pretty horrifying death. And obviously, one to, to go on this list that yeah. fits really well. So yeah, I hope you guys like this episode. I hope so too. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for watching, guys. <laughs> Yes, let us know down below what you think. I hope of the so episode. too. I hope so too. <laughs> hope so too. Like and share the episode, guys. Hashtag UTN. Our website has links to our social media and our merch. Get going. <laughs> hey, you mentioned Harry Houdini earlier. Yes. Our the spinal spoonful, spoonful of noonful noon noon includes is, him. Yeah, a really cool. Well, obviously, like the most inspirational illusionist and the magician of even today. You hear some rare footage uh, showing, obviously, with the tricks and early illusions he did in the 1900s which are still like you know mimic today yeah. you know really cool obviously he was like extremely popular there's a lot of people like who are there to see him yeah so yeah very cool guys uh, you know if you guys want to see more of it definitely look it up there's a lot of harry houdini uh videos up there and there's a lot of people that used to watch him back then because oh, yeah. i mean it was it was very new yeah exactly people were just amazed and amazed that he was able to do all this stuff his so. stuff is still pretty inspirational yeah so as always guys thanks, thanks for staying, staying up, up till noon, noon. Mm-hmm. <laughs>